Sorry from the, for the technical difficulties, but <laughs> good morning. The reading today is from 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she, as well as he and her household, ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of God. Will you join me in prayer? Word beyond all words. May only your word be spoken. May only your word be heard. And may we go forth to embody your word and your way. And together we say. Amen. It was just two weeks ago that seminarian Thomas Mitchell preached his last sermon here. He preached on May 15th, just the day after a white supremacist had driven hundreds of miles across New York State to shoot and to kill black people out for their Saturday morning grocery shop. And as Thomas shared on that Sunday, it was the biggest mass shooting murder that had taken place this year. Today we gather, just two weeks later, after 19 little children and their two teachers were murdered in Robb Elementary School. And as Kathy reminded us, countless 
numbers of people whose lives have been ever changed by the wounds and the trauma of that day. And here we are again, gathering together as church. Thanks be to God for church, especially in times like this. Two weeks ago, Thomas preached a story that took place in the midst of a drought. And in that drought, Ruth and Naomi found each other. And they committed in that time when there was a drought of hope, a drought of knowing, to go into the uncertainty of the future together and to make a way of love and devotion and humility. Today's scripture takes place in another drought. When there is an absence of hope, an absence of possibility, a thinking when, if ever, will things change. When there's a drought in the land, it is a dangerous thing. For it gets into all of us in its own particular and different ways, depending on our histories and stories. It can get into us as fear, as anxiety, as uncertainty, as numbness, as rage, as anger. How in this time of drought, on this Sunday has hopelessness found its way in you. Two weeks ago, Thomas shared that in that time of drought, these two women found each other and a way forward. And this Sunday, in a strange little story, Elijah points to the great catastrophe the great loss in a time of drought, and that is the loss of wonder. The filmmaker and activist Valerie Kerr says, says, the failure to wonder the failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. She goes on, she says this, when we cease wondering about each other, we stop seeing others as part of ourselves and we disable our ability for empathy. When we lose empathy, for each other, we can do anything to each other, and we can let anything be done to each other. Failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. And in this time of drought, in this strange little story, Elijah seems to just want to open up everybody in that story and us today to wonder. There's a drought in the land, and God tells Elijah not to go to the market, not to go to the grocery store, not to go to the king, but to go to a widow of all things. A widow who by her very name has nothing. She doesn't even have a name. She has no husband, which is how she is known. That means she has no status. She's got no money. She's got nothing. Go to the widow and ask her to feed you. What an absurd little story. Well, Elijah, being open to absurdity and wonder, 
goes to the widow and he says to her out there at the gate picking up sticks, hey, could you get me a cup of water? And so she goes away to get him a cup of water. And then he says, hey, and while you're at it, could you get me, could you get me just a loaf of bread? And she turns around to him and says, buddy, you got to be kidding. I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. I'm out here picking up these sticks so that I can make a little fire and have a little last supper with my son. I got nothing. And then Elijah says the most puzzling thing to her. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what? Don't be afraid of the fact that you have nothing. Don't be afraid of wonder, possibility, my gosh, what in the world would that do to us, in us, in you and me in this community if we had a lot of wonder? Don't be afraid. Just go and make me a little cake, a little bit of bread, and then some for you and for your son. And then that wonderful word that Christina read shows up twice. the little cup of meal and the jar of oil will not run out. Which is a very familiar story. I mean, it comes up all the time in Scripture. You may think of your stories of that. Like, there's these thousands of people and they're all hungry and all there is is just a little boy with a couple of fish. And everybody's fed. Or the wine has run out at the wedding. And then, oh my gosh, there's wine for everybody. And not only just any wine, but the best wine. Or the oil. There's not enough oil to make it through the night. And there's oil for all of the nights. Wonder. What a wonder it is. What do you make of it? Is it just wishful thinking? Is it true? Is it just a story? What do you make of it? Well, I don't know what to make of it fully, all, in all of its wonder and mystery, except I do know this. There aren't enough words to say all that there could be said, and there's not enough time to do it in. It's true. Hearts and Hands doesn't have enough volunteers. It's true, we don't have enough communion servers. It's true, this church budget cannot support all the needs of this building built for another time and era. That's true. It is true that there are not enough basses and tenors in the choir. All those things I have heard from you, that they're true. And this is well. Elijah pokes at us. Look up. Just look up. And imagine all those needs, all that worry, all that anxiety, all that fear, this spirit burning around, spilling around in our country and our world right now in so many particular places and people. 
And then I invite you to stand, if you're able to stand up, and if not, to just perhaps open up your arms. <laughs> and I invite you, armed open, <laughs> standing up, to turn and just notice who's here. Just look at each other. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what a wonder it is <laughs> in all that we don't have and all that's not enough. Oh my gosh, we found each other. <laughs> you found each other. We found our way here. And I'll tell you what, we've got enough. We've got so much more than enough to sing. And let's do that now.